In this video, we're going to learn how to merge two sorted lists in Python. So for example, let's say we have a list L1 with 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 as items. And let's say we have a list L2 with 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 as items. What we want to do is merge these two sorted lists together into a new sorted list with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. To do this, we'll create a function. We'll call the function merge sorted lists, and the function will have the parameters list one and list two for the two lists. Now, one simple way to solve this problem would be to concatenate the two lists together. So we could have list one concatenated with list two. Then we could call the sorted function to sort the concatenated list. So here we could have sorted, and then we could just return this with return the sorted list. And this will work. The problem is it's not very efficient because we're basically just taking two, four, six, eight, and 10 and concatenating those items onto the end of one, three, five, seven, and nine. And then this sorted function is going to have to do some extra work to sort this new concatenated list. But we could take advantage of the fact that these lists are already sorted. First, let's test out this version of the function. Down here, we'll call merge sorted lists. We'll pass it L1 and L2 and we'll store the results into a variable called merged. Then down here, we'll output merged with print merged. And if we save this and try it out here, we'll see that this version does give us the merged list. Now let's write a more efficient version. To solve this problem more efficiently, we're going to take advantage of the fact that both of these lists are already sorted. We're going to build a new merge list. We'll create a loop, which is going to go through both of these lists at the same time. And as we do, we're going to continually find the next smallest item in either list, and we'll append that item to the new merge list. So here we'll first create our merge list, which is initially going to be empty. Then we'll create two counter variables, i and j, to help us loop through list one and list two. We'll have i and j are both initially equal to zero, the first indexes in both lists. And we'll use i to go through list one, and we'll use j to go through list two. Now our loop is going to stop once we reach the end of either list one or list two with our counter variable i or j. So we'll find the length of these lists and store them into variables. We'll have here len1 and len2 are equal to the length of list one and list two. We'll find the length by calling the len function. So we'll call len to find the length of list one and we'll call len to find the length of list two. Now we have the length of the list. So then we'll create a loop, which is only going to continue so long as we haven't reached the end of list one using counter variable i, and we haven't reached the end of list two using counter variable j. So we'll have while i is still less than len1 and j is still less than len2. This means we haven't reached the end of either list. Now we're going to use i and j to keep track of the next possible item to append to the merge list from list one and list two. So i is initially going to be here at index zero in list one, and j is initially going to be here at index zero in list two. And we'll be using i and j to go through each list one item at a time. And as we do, we'll be appending items to the new merge list. Now, because these lists are sorted, we'll know that i and j will always be storing the index of the next lowest item in each list. So i will always be storing the index of the next lowest item in list one and j will always be storing the index of the next lowest item in list two. So in the loop body, we'll first check to see if the next lowest item in list one is less than the next lowest item in list two. And if it is, then we'll take that item and append it to our merge list and we'll increment i. So i is now storing the index of the next lowest item in list one. So here we'll have if the item in list one at the index i in other words, the next lowest item in list one is less than the item in list two at the index j, in other words, the next lowest item in list two, then this tells us that between the two lists, list one has the next lowest item. So we'll take that item from list one and we'll append it to our merge list. We'll have merge.append list one at the index i. Then we'll increment i by one to have i store the index of the next lowest item in list one. So here, for example, when the loop first runs, i is going to be at the index zero of list one, and j is going to be at the index zero of list two. 
And if we check if the item in list one at the index i is less than the item in list two at the index j, we'll find this is true because one is less than two. So we'll take one and we'll append it to our merged list. And we'll have that merged so far looks like this with just one as the first item. And then we'll increment i by one. So that way i stores the index of the next lowest item in list one. Now the other possibility is that the next lowest item in list two at the index j is less than or equal to the next lowest item in list one at the index i. We'll handle that case with an else branch. So we'll have here else. If this is not true, that means the item in list two at the index j is less than or equal to the item in list one at the index i. In other words, the next lowest item is going to come from list two and not list one. So we'll have here merged.append list two at the index j. We'll take that next lowest item in the list two and we'll append that to our new merged list. And then we'll increment j by one with j plus equals one. And so for example, when this loop runs again with these two lists here, we'll have that i is at the index one of list one and j is at the index zero of list two. And so this time when we do this comparison here, it's going to be false because the item in list one at the index i is not less than the item in list two at the index j. Three is not less than two. This time it's list two that has the next lowest item between the two lists. So we'll take that item and append it to our merge list. And so we'll have one and then two. Then we're we'll increment j by one to have j store the index of the next lowest item in list two. And so this loop will just continue to proceed like this. We'll just continue to take the next lowest item from either list and append it to our new merge list. Eventually, we're going to reach the end of one of these lists. When we do, we're going to take any remaining items from the other list and concatenate them to our merge list. And that will complete our merge list. So here, when this loop is done, that will mean we've reached the end of one of our lists. In that case, we're going to return our merge list but we're also going to concatenate to this list any remaining items from the other list which we did not reach the end of yet. So we'll have here plus for concatenation, then we'll have list one, and we're going to use a slicing operation. We'll have here i colon. So this is going to give us a list. It's going to give us a list made up of the items in list one from the index i onwards. So for example, if i was here, that would mean we made it this far into list one and we still have these two items left in list one to put into our merge list. And this here would give us a list with those items, which we would then concatenate to merged. Then we'll also have here plus list two, and we'll have j colon. So this will give us any remaining items from the index j onwards in list two, which is how far we got into that list. Now remember, only one of these is actually going to have any items remaining. Because for example, if we reach the end of list one, then i is going to be at the index, which is equal to the length of list one. And so this here would actually return an empty list. So only one of these is actually going to have items in it and we'll concatenate those items to merged. So this will do it. Now down here, when we call the function, we'll be calling our new version of the function. We can save this and try it out. And again, we're going to get our merge list. So this is how we can merge two sorted lists using Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.